A long time ago, Hercules found himself at the crossroads to make the most important decision of his life. At an intersection in the hills of Greece, two goddesses were arguing for him to follow their path. The first goddess was the most stunning beauty one could ever imagine, offering him a life of ease and pleasure, free of pain, fear and unhappiness. The other, less sexy goddess, made a more subtle call, offering nothing but the intrinsic rewards of hard work and labor. He would have to face his own demons and live a life of sacrifice, but in the end it would make him the man he was meant to be. After some contemplation, he went with the haughty, indulging in endless godlike orgies and unlimited divine wine. And he fucking loved it. I'm kidding, of course. You know what he did. Just as you know deep down what you have to do at the intersections you face every day. This book invites us to always take the hard but noble path, and especially living a life in line with the virtue of justice. This is Detox Dan presenting my summary of Writing Right Now by Ryan Holiday. The virtue of a person is measured not by his outstanding efforts, but by his everyday behavior. Blaise Pascal When Harry S. Truman got elected into office during the aggressive ending of the World War II, the world was in shock. How did this farmer, who completely failed at entrepreneurship and didn't graduate college, get the perhaps most important job in the world? In these desperate times, was he really the savior God had sent down to us? Although the general public, and even Truman himself, was skeptical of whether he could carry this heavy burden, the people working around Truman was not concerned at all. It was all because they knew he was a man of virtue, someone who always kept his word. Someone who, surrounded by corruption in his early politics career, refused to even consider accepting a bribe, despite it being the norm. He was, as someone said, all right from his asshole out in every direction. I think this is a really good illustration of what can happen if you stick to justice no matter what, even if you fail at other areas in life. If you need more larger than life examples, go ahead and read the book. In the end, Truman, a simple ordinary person, managed to keep his character intact through this immense task. When times were tough, he rested on something the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius once wrote, The four greatest virtues are moderation, wisdom, justice and fortitude. And if a man is able to cultivate those, that's all he needs to live a happy and successful life. He also created a catch your personal code that guided all his decisions. If it's not right, do not do it. So how do we ourselves embark on this epic journey of character building and creating justice in the world? I will present the two most impactful ways I found in this book. First off, you need to start small. Bummer to the ego, I know. But the goal to change the whole world for the better at once easily creates the illusion that some tasks are too small for you and not worth your time. This is exactly how you get stuck. Mother Teresa wisely said, If I look at the mass, I will never act. If I look at the one, I will. And Carl Jung, perhaps the most influential psychologist in modern times, gave the advice to quietly do the next and most necessary thing. In this way, you will ensure progression towards justice and many tiny steps eventually pile up. It is also a powerful statement showing that the seemingly small things matter. It gives hope in a world where some of the biggest crises might seem hopeless. And what if all the hard work you put in throughout your life ends up helping just a single person? Then it would all be worth it. That's why the Jewish text the Talmud says that he who saves one person saves the world. I often like imagining this when I create these videos. Despite not getting millions of views, at least not yet, there is always the chance that someone watching takes away one helpful thing. If so, I am happy to continue grinding, day in and day out. The other big idea is to always act as if someone is watching. If you live a completely transparent life, you will be immune to corruption and dishonesty, the antagonists to justice. Because all the bad things we do, we prefer to hide and keep in the dark. 
evil hates the light, as the Bible states. It is a very simple way to approach every action you take. Would you be ashamed if the whole world knew about this? If you're inclined to hide it, you should probably just not do it. Confession time. I still make most of my income through playing online poker. Who am I to ask you guys to detox from the world of quick and easy stimuli, yet gamble for a living myself? Well, at least now you know. In the end, someone is always watching. I don't care if you call it God, the universe, or just you yourself. But you do see everything you do. Why would you keep higher standards having someone else watching than yourself? Ultimately, it will be up to yourself to be the judge of your actions. Do things every day that you would be proud showing off. And do things every day that makes you able to sleep at night. That way, you will create justice. That was it for my summary of Ryan Holiday's book, Right Thing Right Now. If you like this video, make sure to check out my summary of one of his other books, Ego is the Enemy, which also tackles important ways to improve our characters. And I'll see you next time.